Hi everyone, Booze and Boards making Jeb. This is going to be our little Origins special video yep. where we talk about our us origin doing the origins. recap and believe it or not, that was Jeb and I's first big gaming convention. Board gaming convention, yep. Yep. Um, even though we what we've liked these things for four or five yeah. years now and been collecting and all that, uh, we just never had a chance to actually go. My son plays Pokemon competitively. They were having a pretty big tournament there. And he went up with a friend, and I was like, well, it's not too far for me to travel, so Jeb and I are going to go up, and while he does that, we're going to go to the convention. Yes. So that is what we did, and we are here to at least tell you about some of the experiences. I will show you some of my loot. He didn't buy any loot because he's lame. He I says bought he bought stuff. loot, but he didn't. It wasn't he, a lot of stuff. Yeah, because he just wandered around going, oh, oh. <laughs> so I think he stuff. was looking at girls. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> like this. Anyways, I'll tell you about the stuff I got because I can't help myself. <laughs> yeah, I tried to stop him, but at one, he, he was doing really well up until Sunday morning. <laughs> and then it. it's I like could, the floodgates I just... I couldn't <laughs> contain it anymore. Yeah. It was all gone. All right, so let's start with... Us the, getting there. Yeah, we got lost. We got, no, <laughs> we got lost. I think no, we got there at the like... The GPS got yeah. us lost. And then if you've ever had that experience, first of all, we were going up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Second of all, the GPS took us somewhere else. It was one of those situations where it's like, I know this is wrong. But maybe it'll not, work out, right? Well, you kind of like, I have to follow the GPS now because I don't know where I am. Yeah, they, so, it did get to that point where it was like... Yeah, yeah, so it's like, oh, that's what we had to do. So anyways, long story short, we should have been there at 11, and we got there at 1. Yeah. Or 11.30, whatever it was. 1.30 or 12.30. Uh, but when we got there, uh, you said this year was different because they were doing all that construction, which was oh, really in, bad. But downtown Columbus yeah. was full of construction, which it wasn't, um, which it w which it wasn't last year. So, anyways, that was the journey up. Yep. Uh, we we did bring our camera and we didn't fil film anything. So you're just gonna have to listen to us flap about what we did. And we'll show you some things, and perhaps Jeb can find some stuff on the internet to flash big picture, fancy pictures on you, because that's what he does. And then next year, I will do my best to... Hey, we won't. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. But but maybe, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll pretend we're professionals, go up a couple days early, and actually get yeah. into some booths and ask them if they mind if we get a little, a little uh, uh, comment from them or whatever yeah. on, on certain games. But... Um, we're gonna we're gonna start with the highlight of uh, what Jeb and I did because it's something that I've always wanted to do. I showed it to him and he was like, "Yeah, I want in on that." Really cool. So, what did we do, Jeb? True dungeon. True dungeon. Oh, Flash. Jeb's gonna put a picture up. Not a. He forgot only, to put the picture up. Did only of <laughs> only of the logo because they won't let you film anything. Yeah. Anyways, if you don't know what it is, True Dungeon is. Uh, a basically a live uh, dungeon RPG two-hour experience that you get to go through um, and they make it from scratch they make the scenarios there's riddles there's dragons or not dragons but there's monsters and uh, and it's just it's it's really it's really cool um, and we hadn't done it before but the gist of it is a party of ten up to a party yes, of ten uh, sits down in a room. You pick your characters. You have these little coins. I don't know if you'll be yep. able to uh, see them. When you them. sign up, they give you a bag of ten coins. You can also purchase the coins from the website as well. This is your little bag, <clears throat> and it's a it. it's kind of like a CCG kind of thing where it's random coins. You don't know what you get. There's right. good stuff. There's basic stuff right. like just a mix of whatever so for example i'm just holding here a, a ring of twilight a medallion of a meditation and a charm of iron sight so basically before you go in you sit down with <clears throat> your collection of uh tokens here and they have a picture of a it's like a dude a, a body and then basically you have spots yep to lay these on, on. 
you lay them on the spots in whatever configuration you want. There's there's parts for weapons and and jewelry and armor and whatever you can think of. There's there's spots for on there. You lay them all out. Your guide comes through. Uh, he has a character sheet. He looks at everybody's character sheets, writes down all their stats. So all you have to carry with you through the dungeon are your weapons and anything consumable. Yeah. And here's the cool part. If you have consumable items, they're really consumable. If you use it, they take them. They take it. <laughs> they take it, it's gone. Hey, Ray. Um so uh ooh, do you have anything else to add, Jeb? Uh before or when you sit down, uh Mickey mentioned it was a party of up to ten people. When you when we went in, we didn't realize that the party was had to be ten different classes. We thought when you walk in, you can pick whatever you want. So say ten people wanted to be wizards, then it could be a party of ten wizards. Nope. It's not. It's Tell them what happened to me, Jeb. Tell Mickey, them what happened to me, Jeb. <laughs> Mickey got his packs before we went, and I did the same thing. We went through and figured out who we wanted to be. I was going to be either like a some kind of warrior, barbarian, whatever. And Mickey got everything to be a cleric. So Mickey's ready to go in, be the cleric of the group. And when he gets there, there was a guy who was like, I'm the cleric. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm a level five cleric, and I have, I've been doing this for four years, and I have all this stuff. And I'm like, well, then I literally can't play. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> because I had nothing. I mean, I literally would have had nothing. Yeah. So here's the other thing well, that... Oh, one quick thing. He was, he was nice enough to let you play as... Oh, okay. That's what you're gonna say. Then go for it. Go Let's for go it. In there. Go for it. So here's the other thing about True Dungeon. Everybody is really cool. Yeah. So when I said I didn't have anything to play, he was like, "Well, here, I have another character. Just use all my coins yep. or tokens." And so I ended up playing a paladin. Um, and not just that guy. Like when we were sitting around the table, everybody was like, "You it need was, to borrow yeah, this." Yeah, it was like, "Do you Get need this? this? Are you missing Here, this, this is better. Yep. You take this. Just make sure you give it back at the end of the game." And that's really important because some of these tokens literally go into the thousands of dollars. Yep. Those thousand dollar ones are really, really rare, but they actually people actually on the secondary market spend that kind of money. This game is like there's super fanatics that play this mm -hmm. game and uh and and it did kind of hook jeb and i a little bit i'm not spending any thousand dollars yeah. on a token but i have to admit that as long as they come back to origins jeb and i are taking that trip up the <laughs> urge to, to buy stuff off of ebay is really strong it's strong but then there's this part in my brain that's like this thing only happens at what gen con origins and maybe like two, one or two, two other, other ones that we don't we're not familiar so, with. It's like it's not really worth us spending money if we're not able to go to all of them. Mm -mm, so. Not not really, but uh, I I I think the most that we would pluck away on the usually the rare stuff hovers around five bucks. Yeah. After that, it starts to get expensive because after that, there's ultra rares. Those start approaching the hundreds of dollars, and then. I, I mean, you get to do stuff like transmute stuff, you know, you save all your, like, you save your common stuff and trade it in. It's just, we can't get into all the details. But anyways, so, after the room... After the room, uh, they take you to a little training area, which there's a person, the staff member or whatever, who's in there, and he'll he'll just be like, who's the wizard, who's the cleric, and then he'll, like... He'll explain what you have to do right. in your your thing. Like yep. so, all the warrior people they got chances to practice sliding the the things uh, to test out their fighting. Because in the game you fight by sliding your coin across the table and trying right. to get it onto the pattern of the bad guy. So if you've ever seen a tabletop shuffleboard, yeah, that's basically the action for fighting in the game. So you take your weapon and they have a little holder for it. And they're labeled what whoever it is. So there's a, there's a bunch of these uh, token holders with like a felt bottom on them, and you plop them in there. And you know, say Jeb Jeb played um, barbarian the first game, so he takes his barbarian weapon, he puts it in there, and then at the end of the shuffleboard type table, they have a diagram of whatever you're fighting with, like like different parts of its body are worth 
different amounts of uh, hits. It's like uh, if you like, roll a d20, right? Because the numbers like, on it go up to twenty, and like a twenty right, is a like, critical. So. so on some things, like hitting him in the head, yep. was really good, and then sometimes someplace else, like you know, hitting him in the groin was actually better than hitting, depending on the monster. Yeah. But anyways, you get the idea. So wherever you landed on the monster said how good you hit. Like Jeb said, it represented rolling the die. Yep. They add the modifiers. The DM's looking at all the things, telling you if you hit or not. It would slide the stuff back as he was like, you hit, you didn't, you hit, you didn't. Um, if you want to get into a little more detail, these the tokens on them, all the weapon ones have numbers around the edge. Yeah. And uh, the DM is looking... There's a, there's a dot on the side of the board. So when you slide it, so say my token was here, and he's looking across like this from that dot to see which number is closest. Yep. And that's the number that you rolled, so to speak. So anyways, that's a general overview of, of the fighting. Yeah, so in the training, the fighters would just be able to slide it. And it wasn't actually limited to just the fighters. I think everybody could if they wanted to. Oh, yeah, as long as you had a weapon, yeah. you could you could do it. The problem is, so it worked just like a D&D &D game. You get one action per round. So if, if I'm a cleric and Jeb's got one hit point of health and I slide instead of healing, healing Jeb could die because... Yeah. The monster gets a turn, too. When you walk into a room, they roll for initiative, and wherever the initiative ends up falling is when the monster gets attacked and when the heroes get to attack. Um, so so it, it, it does simulate the idea of a role-playing game pretty good. And also in the training room, there's uh, certain classes can do different things. So, like, the cleric, uh, there's things that require you to know what... I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a diagram with different shells, like what the different shells look like, and each are associated with a word. So if Mickey uses one of his spells, uh, the DM of the room would show him a shell, and if he named the correct word, then it would do extra damage. Right. So like, there's that for the cleric. I think the wizard had some kind of symbols he had to memorize. Right. Uh, what was the So thing? if I remember correctly, well, first of all, that, like, Mine were on, they were more like beads, but some of them looked like shells, so he had them on like a rope string, and he would like take one out, like Jeb said, and he'd just show it to me, and I'm expected to tell him what it was, like, oh, that's the symbol for love. If I do that, I get a bonus to my spell. So, you, it's good in the fact that you don't totally fail, because I was really worried about that, because you got, there's a lot to remember, and I did get to play Cleric the second game, that's why... I, I, I know how it and works. And he got all of them right. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> and the other guy that was playing uh, Druid did not. I don't yeah. think he got one right. No, he didn't. Oh, I hope you're not watching this. Just made fun <laughs> of the dude. I didn't make it. You didn't make it. <laughs> anyway, so the but Druid the, first time. the Druid has a chart of leaves. Yep. And there's all different shapes. And he has to know what every leaf is. If... The druid wants to cast a spell. The dungeon master takes out this flip book, picks any leaf that he wants, and says, what's this leaf? If the druid can name it, he'll get a bonus on whatever his uh, whatever he was trying to do. The wizard has uh, planes of magic, and basically it was kind of like a, like kind of abstract shapes, um, but they were symmetrical, so like, there were two of the same shapes up in these top two corners, two of the same shapes down in the bottom two corners, but they were all labeled different. And so when you walk into a room, that uh, that little symbol thing was sitting there blank in each room. So if the wizard wanted to cast a spell, the DM would go over there and point to something, and he would have to name what plane of magic that was, and then that way... Uh, he he would either uh, succeed or or fail. Um, the uh, the rogue in some of the rooms there was a box that the rogue would have. To, it was kind of like operation yeah. where you like had to move a stick through a little maze, and if he touched the side, then he, he failed. Right? Yeah. 
So, and once he succeeded, it would open the box and there'd be a clue for the group to use for whatever. But what's the really cool part of that? This is so, this is so good. It's so so messed up too. It isn't so (laughs) messed up, he's a rogue! So, in addition to the, uh, the clue, there's also some coins. Yeah, there's treasure in it. he has the choice of taking the coins for himself or taking the clue for the group. (laughs) And we found out later that there are some items that actually let the rogue take both of them. Right. But I think that's like higher higher class stuff. Because Jeff was wondering, like, I think it was the first game we played, this guy would, and he just, he just crushed the first one. Like, no problem. And then all the second, the second time he had to do it, it was like, Oh, oh, I, didn't, I messed, oh, up. I messed oh. up. I'm like she distracted you, me. <laughs> you took you took the gold is what you did or yeah. whatever was in there. Um, so, anyways, they they do. Uh, it, it's pretty. It was pretty neat. We enjoyed ourselves. Yeah. Um, so after training, it's seven rooms, and in each room, it's either going to be a puzzle that you have to solve. Or a battle. Or a so, battle that you have. And then, like, the, the people working it actually act out all the stuff. So, yep. like, there are characters. Yep. There was a Dro... Uh, what was she? I can't remember. Like, some kind of thief or something. I don't know. But she she was, like, leading our group for a few rooms. So, yep. uh, that was pretty cool. They had people interacting with us throughout the thing. Mm, yeah, and, and there was a... In the second scenario, there was a succubus. And yeah. then they have... Uh, there's animatronics in there, yeah, and the, really set, cool. the settings are pretty cool. The riddles are not, like, straightforward. Yeah, you think going uh, in with ten people, yeah. you'd be able to figure it out. They don't, <laughs> they don't, they don't make it, they don't make it easy, and, um, and everything is timed, too. You don't have as much time room, as you, I think. something like that. So, the, 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 the DM in each room... You know, he knows how much time you have, and if you can't solve that riddle or, or beat the, you know, beat the bad guy, you're taking you're taking some hits big yeah. time. Um, they're not uh, they're not playing. And I think if you actually <laughs> die in it, you you kind of like turn into a ghost where you can't really do anything. You, you just have, have to, to walk just around walk, and walk with your group yeah. and. So so and so all of this is um, the the cost of it for two hours is like is forty two bucks. Uh, you get a you get a that includes a bag of ten of the tokens, and at the end you get um, three tokens. Yes. And there are items that crank up your treasure. Yes. So th- we talked to a guy before we started, and he was like, "Both of you guys want this robe because it gave us an extra treasure at the yeah. end." And then what we didn't know was that because uh, they did they run out. No, we were doing a scenario that had previously been done, or yeah. something to that effect, and instead of giving us the token that would have came with it, they just gave us another yeah, one, or something so like that. There's like, I think it's called the completion completion. Maybe token. it's only two tokens, because then we end up getting four, or yes. did we get five? No, we did get five, so it is three plus the one plus the extra for yeah. the scenario, so... But yeah, they, they every time they do an event, they give a token that yeah. is specifically for right. the event. And since this one was already done before, they were like, "We'll just yeah. give everybody an extra treasure right. when they finish." So. Right. And so when you come, when you're done, and you go out, uh, they have these, you know, these sealed boxes, kind of like when you were a kid and you went to the doctor and you got to pick out of the treasure chest. Um, that's full of tokens, and the lowest token is an uncommon, um, and actually I don't think we pulled many of those. You, so you have no, a really good chance the, of getting rare and above. The box, I think rare is the, the lowest. Uncommon is. I thought he said if you saw an uncommon, you give it back. Or yeah, is uncommon saw, green? Green is uncommon. Okay, if you see a yeah, black one, you have The black one is, yeah, okay. So, uh, and, so I'll just say it now, because this, this jerk over here pulled three ultra rares yes three i got none zero actually i think out of both of our groups on our second group one person pulled one yeah so yeah, i've got <laughs> three and they run approximately a hundred bucks each yep. so go figure i'm the one who tells him to go play this game and he gets all the good stuff but one of those ultra rares <coughs> was the weapon for the cleric 
So guess who got to use that? I in did the second in the scene? second game because we get we made sure that we got there. Like we were the first ones in the room, and we grabbed what we wanted to be. Yeah. Um, evidently, there's some etiquette for that too. I guess somebody could have come in and yeah, and, put, and and pushed us around a little bit. Um, everybody's pretty polite, mm -hmm. but uh, um, so if you want some tips about going in, not that we're professionals. If you know there's something you want to play, try to be there early if you've never done this. Um, uh, people, so when you do these events, they give you a little experience code that you'll go online and in your account you up put the code in and it gives you experience. So at a certain level, I think it was like level 5 or something, Those whoever's level 5, there's actually a rule that's like they get to have first pick in the room. So like... If you ever run across somebody who's ha a, that level, they get to choose what uh, they want to be. But other than that, you would want to be in there first because then you get first pick. Right. So. so, yeah, so that's what I was talking about with, like, the etiquette. So, yeah. you know, Jeb kind of explained how that's, you know, that's supposed to work in terms of what level you are. Um, other things I would... If, if you're going to do it, splurge on a couple extra bags yes. of coins. They're not that expensive. They're like eight bucks, and they you just go to the True Dungeon site, and they'll send them to you so you have a little bit to go in with. Um, everybody was really helpful, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can't, you can't, if, if, if you know you have a group of people, and especially if you're like beginners, and you can all grab an entire spot yeah highly recommend that they were saying um, that or when we we looked yeah. but we didn't like put it or at least i didn't put it together but the guy who mentioned it said that there are people who will go into the website and then buy all 10 tickets to the room right and then just divvy it out to his friends or whatever right so and then the you know and then you just then you just you know collect from your friends or whatever for the money um but that being said so it so 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 what can happen is you can get somebody that's been in there and they can get overzealous and you know they they could you know oh they they know everything they've got all this power blah 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 um, they can make it a little less exciting for you so but nobody ruined it for us or anything like that I'm just what, what I guess what I'm trying to point out is if you get a much higher level player. And you're a beginner, that that can make a difference if you have a like a uh, what's the word in board board if you have an alpha alpha, alpha gamer, gamer yeah. in the dungeon. Um, I would say for a beginner that might not be as great of an experience, yeah. a, a, especially since <clears throat> like we had a really high person in our first session, and it was the the thrill of like you know, being on that edge all the time and, like, not knowing if you were going to make it wasn't there because he was just, like, he just, he was so powerful that he just, like, led the group. Yeah. I mean, he really should have been playing on the, we played normal. He, he should have yeah. been playing the next level up. But in the second one, we had a similar guy, but he kind of stood back yeah. more and let everybody do everything. And then if, if somebody called upon him or he was needed... Then he came in. Um, again, it, it didn't ruin anything. I just like to point that out so you know what you're getting into. Yeah, they they don't actually like separate people out by their experience. Right. So like it could be if you were unlucky enough, you could be by yourself a new person and get grouped with nine people who have been playing for like eight years. Yeah. So that. Well, might... I don't know if it's been going on for eight years. Whatever. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> That's so, uh, so that could happen, but then there's also the chance you could just be in a group of all new people. Right. Which and, and the second time we played, we were with mostly new yeah. people. As a matter of fact, there was a lot of people that had done what I, that Jeb and I did and had just played the previous adventure and were going into the um, into the next one. Um, and, and I want to say, and don't I, I, I don't know for sure, you'd have to go look, but I think at Gen Con, you can actually pick the level when you're registering that you want to play at. I, but I'm not positive about that. I do know uh, when, when you like set up all your uh, coins and they take down your stats and stuff, that they said that as a group you can decide what level difficulty is. Uh, so like we did it on normal, which is like 
Or, yeah, but I, well, I all I was that's yeah, why yeah, I was I saying, saying I think like I think they actually have it so you can go to a type of group that you want right, so you don't right. get mixed. But I don't know that for sure. I just yeah, think I, I saw that, I, and I'm not positive. I, I didn't go re look it up. Um, but if you can't tell, we had a super fun yeah, time it was with really that. Fun. We uh, it, it's I you know it, it if you can get and the more friends that you have, I think that you know. You would even have have a, a better time. Not that we didn't have fun with strangers or whatever, but yeah. you know how to feed off your friends. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to, to shoot us an email or message or whatever, and we'll try to help you up out as much as we can with what we we learned. So uh, it's really something cool that I think people should try. <laughs> so. Yeah, if you get a chance, to, if you go to one of these things and you get a chance to try True Dungeon, do it. We really liked yeah. it. Um, so, okay, that's it for that. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, we, we go to Origins and we spent most of this episode or this, this video but, talking about a non board game. But anyway, but it's so, related to a tabletop yeah, game. I, I know. So, anyway, when we, when we got to Origins, before we actually did True Dungeon, we wandered around uh, the exhibit hall, also the gaming area, looking at games. We had people demo games, or like they showed us how to yep. play games that we were interested in, what caught our eye, things like that. Um, there was a variety of teachers, I guess. Mm -hmm. There were some good ones, some great ones, some not-so-great ones. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, there were so many things to do there, and we were only there Saturday, Sunday. And oh, we so wish that we would have been yeah. there Thursday, because we could have played. Like, it, it was, like, I don't... We kind of got to set sit down and play full games, but they modified them so yeah. that they would end early and things like that. So we like, and there's tables and tables and tables. You could just like you could go buy a game or bring a game and just sit there and and play and show people or whatever. There were also people who brought in like the supersized games. So oh, yeah. Like what was that power grid? Like, I we think, were walking yeah. by, and we saw all these lights on the table, and yeah. I was like, what is that? Yeah, and we walk did. over, and the guy's like, this is power grid. Full-scale like, power grid. It was so yeah. cool. So, that, it was really cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What was... I don't remember what I was going to do next. So, is there something you want to continue with? Um, oh, I know what. Uh, okay. We did sit down uh, and played one full game. Uh, that was a demo. And when we started playing it, we were both like, we're both going to buy this right now. Oh, and save, we asked, the, save the one that I was saving for last, Jeb brings up first. Oh, then I won't. I nope. won't. I'm like, of all the things you could talk about, Jeb, <laughs> talk about, like, towards the end of the convention when we find this game, and it's, like, the highlight of the convention, and he says it first off. <laughs> okay, I'll stop there. I'll stop there. I didn't say the name of it, so, and that story, just forget I said anything. Everyone. That will watch, because they want to know what you, could, what you were going to yeah. say. Yeah, All right, maybe. so Mickey's boring stuff now. All right, so <laughs> I'll show you my T-shirt. It's my Origins T-shirt. And they were selling previous years for 5 bucks. Jeb didn't even buy a $5 T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, this is make fun of Jeb episode. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right, let's see. Also because I didn't know we were doing this episode today, and Mickey, Mickey has all his stuff, and what I bought is at home. He doesn't have anything. Yeah. All oh, I here's the one. This is this was always full, and I never got to I never got to try it. But I want to try this. It's called Unearth, and it's um I don't know. Here, what if who's that by? <laughs> um, Brother Wise Games. Yeah, there you go. And I, it just looked cool. I didn't get to try yeah, it. Yeah, it, it was. Oh, all here. the tables were full when we went. And so what was so. Uh, mm -hmm. let's see. Here's my badge. <laughs> okay. Alright. This isn't new, but hopefully we're going to do, and, and especially if we get some fan votes for it, Shinobi? Wata! Wata! Okay, so Jeb hasn't played this yet, but I got to play this one time, and every time I've been in the store, it's been sold out, and it's so much fun. It's a set builder, screw your opponent type of game, and it is... Really cool. That never pays off for me. Every time I try to screw you over, it's like you go. You think I you win. would learn? I, I, but I don't. You don't. I, I don't. And then I get irritated. And when everybody I don't laughs. Win. When I know. You win it anyway, so this is one of the ones.
that I picked up because I already knew. Uh, it, well, on top of that, I went to buy a different game that we demoed, and then he was like, "It's only ten bucks," and I went, "Oh my gosh, ten bucks! Yeah. It's mine." So uh, this is uh, one of the one of the games that I got. I this, bought a starter of Star Wars Destiny. You can watch the video we did of that. Uh, it's been sold out in stores for a long time, and I was like, hey, I'm at Origins, I might as well buy it. We'll so probably never it. get to play the game, but we sure do like it. <laughs> Alright, I don't, I'm, I don't think this is in, I think this, I don't know that this has hit the stores yet, but I got this for um, Legendary, which we haven't done yet, so... <laughs> I was actually going to buy this, but then Mickey uh, pointed out that I needed... Uh, you have to have the base set or the yeah. villain set, which, and I don't is, have it, which, so. is, which are basically two different cores that you can use to play this game. Um, if you ever want to see us play it, you can give it, give it a vote. Um, it's a fantastic deck builder, and I really like the X-Men, and I was like, how much is that? They told me the price, and then they were like, and you get a versus deck with it which which is worth the value you know if they throw that in it was a it was a really great deal this is our next episode um that we're doing and yep. and we both like that game well jeb doesn't know if he likes it yet but he does and <laughs> my other game that i bought was rick and morty anatomy park it doesn't come out for another month and i was like hey i might as well while i'm there and i started reading over and it looked really fun well, why did you bring it with you <laughs> Such a jerk. Mickey Mickey hasn't watched Rick and Morty, but he's gonna play that game with me anyway because it is fun. We'll see. <laughs> I think he'd like it. <laughs> okay. All right. The one of the first games that we walked over yep. and actually tested. Um, I had really seen this cool. in a in a in a couple in, in the store a few times. And um, I had read the back, and it sounded good, but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I like flashy covers. I like what it said on the back. Am I going to like this game? And I didn't want to pull the trigger on it. We got to play it, and it's pretty cool. We plan on doing an episode about it, so we won't get too much into it, but it's called The Mysterious Forest by Aiello, if I'm saying that right. I Never I figured out. Or they were say saying like a yellow, a yellow, and because they were all wearing yellow shirts, because oh, I thought I heard some lady say like it's pronounced a yellow, right. yellow shirt. But and it's whatever. it's two to four players, six and up, because there's like no reading or anything on it, and it plays in twenty minutes, and we both liked it. It's like a mix of memorization and dice rolling. It right. <clears throat> all right, um, and then. And the next game I bought was none, because I only bought two games. So. Right, because he's lame. <laughs> so, so giant game convention doesn't buy crap. <laughs> I, got a, I got a few promo cards. Okay, so, well, let's see. I'd, I'd seen this a couple times, uh, like, when I had backed a couple of Daily Magic's game. Um, other ones that we haven't got to review yet. This is called Mana, Mana Surge. Uh, and Jeb and I also got a demo of this, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and this sounded like it played really cool too. The our demo person described it as like a game of hot potato with cards, and she was kind of right. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, whoever's turn it is drops a card. That card has a, a an effect, and then you go around the table and you have to play higher suits, uh, and only the person's card that was first player that turn cast a spell so whatever the effect is of that card it's probably not making much sense without seeing it but anyways the point is that it can go back and forth like you can reverse the spell and come you know and it can go like that um, and I thought it was that uh, it, it was from what she showed us it was good enough for me to pick up because I think it's another one it should be fairly easy to teach people um, it's wizards battling and I like that. Um, and they gave me the Kickstarter promos. And <laughs> more Kickstarter promos. And, and this is where everything and, went downhill. And this is where it went downhill. And where I oh, couldn't like it. So oh, he, I left it. He, I, he <laughs> went to the, the cash register with Mana Surge. Shoot, yeah. No, I just went with <laughs> Mana Surge. 
And then I saw this box. He was like, right Jim, here. Jim, Jim, over Jeb, there go and see look. what that box is, right? Right? And I'm like, oh, that's a cool looking box. Jeb, go see what that box is. So when I tell Jeb to go see what that box is, the lady hears me say, mm -hmm. what's that box? And she goes, oh, that's Sunrise City. That and I, gave, I'm like, well, I walked all the way over here and it's right I didn't even me. get to say Sunrise City. And I was like, what's the right. point of me being here? And so she goes, that's a, it's a great game. We just got the rights to it back. Evidently, somebody else had had it, and it has been out of print. Mm -hmm. um, and here's the kicker. This little box is not the game. <laughs> this is an That's expansion. <laughs> so it's the game. And she's like, it's fantastic. And then other people behind the booth were going, it's fantastic. And I'm like, Peer pressure. oh, you guys are killing me. And I really said that, too. I'm like, you guys, you guys are killing me. So So now Mickey owns almost so the now, entire library of their game. Now I have, no, well, actually I do have quite a few. I didn't buy the playmat, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, this is like a city builder. Um, I, I guess you would compare it to a little bit of, uh, what's the name of the game? Why can't I think of the name of the game? Monopoly. Suburbia. Suburbia. So I, uh, that's that's the f impression that I got. Although if, I don't know if you can see this, but you're building tiles up, and I feel like that I would probably like that a little better than Suburbia. Suburbia is just okay to me, and I know we haven't re reviewed that. So if you've seen it played somewhere else or played it, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't. It's not that I don't like it. It's just it's just okay to me. I wouldn't add it to my collection. I would certainly play it if somebody pulled it out. Um, this sounds like it's got a really cool scoring mechanism and everything else. They talked me right into it, and but I got promos. Yeah. yeah. Hey. I got promos, and so I limited myself to that. <laughs> That's what I bought. Now, what else did we play? Okay, uh, so... So the first thing we played was the Mysterious Forest. forest. I remember doing okay. that. Yes. Then we played the, the one where it was like we were... We it, were playing... It was the Samurai Santa. Arena, Arena of the Gods. Oh, okay. It has a name. Yes. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Oh, I was I, not happy because Mickey was over here ganging up, killing dude, me. And, I and then he kept dude. pinging me for one hit. And he was like, Jeb, are you dead yet? Attack. Are you dead yet? Attack. And then he died. And then, and then I, I thought died. to myself, that was dumb. Yeah. Because <laughs> as soon as somebody dies, you compare with the rest of the player who has the most health. And I knew I didn't have the yep. most health compared to the other player, so it was really stupid of me to kill Jeff, although so it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And that game, so basically you're, you have a god, you're in a tiny little arena, and you're beating up on each other. And that's basically the premise. But there's uh, dice rolls, and it, there's a drafting system, and the, and the, um, the dra uh, not, it's a bidding system, I'm sorry, it's not a drafting system. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the bidding system is so cool because at the beginning of the game you bid your life. Yeah. Bid so life if there's a if there's a an awesome weapon out there, you better be careful. Mm -hmm. You better hope that that weapon can deal enough damage to make up however much you bid on it. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> and you literally take however many life cubes in your hand, put chance out like that, drop them. Whoever got gets the most. Uh, wins uh, the the uh, choice of, of cards yep. first. If there's a tie, you shuffle them up and they and you literally draw yeah. uh, the cards, and it's it's totally random who gets it. Now, the really thing, a cool thing about the game is the opponent's life is hidden through the whole game. Yeah, that was really cool. It really was. Um, so it and so that's why it makes sense that it's not last person standing because you have to be really smart mm -hmm. about when you go for the finishing blow on somebody. You better make sure that you have enough health, unless you don't care like me and you just want to kill Jeb, which is always fun. <laughs> All right. So what did we play after that? Uh, I thought we, it was the petri dish thing. What was I incorrect? I don't I do remember which day we played that. I think the petri dish was before Alice, right? Yes. Okay, so I... I the name of it. It, was, it I, has an X in it, right? Yeah. Oh, Zyotic or... 
Uh, I don't know. It was one that I was kind of excited about when I walked by. So maybe the description of the game will, yeah. you know, if you see it, you, you'll you'll get an idea. But basically, you're like, uh, you have, you're inventing a um, like a disease. That's what you're trying to do, and you have little, you have little like amoebas or something, right? Yeah. They're all different colors. You're blindly picking out of a a bag, and you're putting them on this card. Or you can put them on your opponent's card. Or you can put them on your opponent's card. But you're placing them somewhere. You have to pick out of the bag. You have to place them somewhere. And then it can have a pandemic type of effect. Whereas if you can't fit a certain color on your card, it blows up. There's a chart. Tells you what each color each has card. a different effect. When it blows up, you follow it. And you, you keep playing, play until you playing like that. Um, one of the neat little mechanisms about it is has this little clock, and at the end of the third round, you take this little clock, it looks just like the amoeba things, and you throw it in the bag with everything else. The second that that thing gets drawn, that's it, game is over. Yep, and then you uh, look at your Petri dish and yep. see count up your points. Count out your points, and, and you do that wins. three times, right? You, you, yeah, you yeah, play it's like a, a th right. you played the game three times, and right. the winner at the and end. Then the, and then the winner at that. Unfortunately, it didn't do it for me. Yeah. I was just, I was kind of excited for another quick little, like, just portable game. Um, when, uh, I just, box, when we were playing, I just felt like the points didn't matter, <laughs> like, most of the time, because you just stuff was blowing up, and I was like, what's the point of me even keeping some of the stuff on my thing? I, I don't know. I wasn't excited. Yeah, it was, it was almost too random, yeah. I guess is probably, the, I mean, that's kind of what you're saying, I think. Uh, well, I mean, it, you can't, you, it was really, really hard to like keep your like keep your points right and i mean i guess that's the whole point of putting the the clock thing in the bag because you don't know when it's going to end no i and mean I think I, for us when we played it was actually like one of the clock was one of the like the last five oh it was things. lower than that i think yeah. it was like close to two or three left in the bag when yeah. it got pulled it so we three. actually went through the yeah. entire bag yeah the lady there was like i don't think i've seen <laughs> yeah. this happen so anyways um that's that's a game that we tried. We, uh, let's see, what else did we try? We tried a Kickstarter called uh, Orcs Must Die. Um, I, and that one was uh, basically a castle defense thing. All kinds of really cool looking miniatures. Mm -hmm. um, so you had four heroes. It scales, so you can go to two to four heroes. Um, and just waves of monsters coming down. I thought it played, the little bit that we saw, I thought it played really good. I, I was close. Yeah. I, I was really close yeah. on, he was. On, the, on the purchase. And I got sidetracked with this other stuff, and I just didn't end up going back. Because it's a good thing, if I would have walked back past the, the, the booth again, I probably would have picked it up. Um, but I also remembered that I have another tower defense coming from the creators that did the um, Carnage. Carnage video that we and they did a really good job on Carnage, so I don't know. I, if you, you don't know, like it, you have another option. <laughs> I do. I have another option. Um, but they did an excellent job. And let's see, what else? We stopped by Japanime Games. Yes. And we did the Alice Matic Heroes, and yep. we also did Heart of Crown. Mm -hmm. uh, Heart of Crown we both backed on Kickstarter, and that's actually coming pretty soon. So, and and we're probably going to review it, so we'll yeah. just say real quick, we're both glad we backed it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, yep. it, it's like Tonto, where it's a deck builder, but they threw some really cool mechanisms they in did. there. They so. did. It's really, um, and the art was good, too, so yep. uh, look forward to that one. The Alice game. Alice Matic. Um, that Alice one, in Wonderland type of scene. Yeah, when we were playing it, I didn't feel like so we know when at the convention they set up demo like versions of the game so it's going to be shorter than an entire game but the demo version of this game felt like nothing even happened like we played yeah. three rounds all right and so it was over and it's like oh. i am going to call out their demo person on this one because <laughs> it really wasn't very good at all um it took jeb until we and I, or maybe, I think Jeb got it a little quicker no, than I did. I, like, you were at, just at getting lucky because it, you were at, like asking him what should I do or yeah, whatever. Yeah, at, at the end of it, I was like, I oh, played this uh -huh. completely wrong, but it turned out I won. So. So. <laughs> so, yeah, I actually had more cards down and everything. I know, and you were playing it well. Anyways, so we didn't, 
like by by the end we're pretty sure that we understood it not a hundred percent sure but by the end we kind of we didn't get a chance to sit down again because they actually had a place where yeah. they were actually playing the game we meant to we didn't get to get over there um but i feel like just at the very end of it uh i was starting to see what they were doing and i feel like it's a good game yeah so uh, we definitely will have to try it uh, yeah research it some more or whatever um uh, it be and and it 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 had uh it was like a little uh i guess they weren't circles but it had it was Flower, maybe is yeah, the best way to put it. It was it was like a hex game, except they weren't hexes. Yeah. So you could rearrange the board in a lot of different ways. There's a deck with special abilities. Um, you have you know cards in front of you that represent uh, army, magic, something and something. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, so you have attributes. these different attributes in front of you too that you need to build up to be able to do certain things on the board. Then he says you play this thing over 14 rounds. And at first, Jeb and I were like, what? Yeah. 14 rounds. You, you, Each round, you have four little discs of whatever your character is. They get placed on the board. Once everybody's placed their four things, which you have to do every turn, that's the end of a round. So all right, once you know what you're doing, it's going to move pretty quick. And after what we saw, you, you probably do need that many rounds to build up your... Uh, your, your powers in front of you and then have a lot of shenanigans going on. Yeah. Anyways, we, we think it's good. We don't know for sure. Yeah. Uh, Heart of Crown was good and we can't wait to review that for you. Yes. yes. Um, we got to... Oh, I was, I was you, saving that for last. Well, last before last the that? really okay, good I'm not gonna, So what else don't is look there? there. <laughs> All right. I can, so we, we played... played that one by Cool Mini, uh, the robots in the arena. Oh my gosh! I think it started with a G. Oh boy, we're not. We we we're doing this on the fly, people. Yeah, so Cool Mini has a bod, a bot battle arena. Yeah. And the bots look fantastic. Yes. The models were pre like pre-painted, um, Cool Mini like level. So you know that the figures were really good. Um. And basically, you got your bot, uh, you're in a, a tiny, what, 3x3 three three grid. 3x3, three three, yep. And it's an all-out battle to last bot standing. Um, they had some really cool mechanisms in terms of as you die, your bot gets stronger to keep it leveled all the time. They also had it so you can't gang up on somebody once you target a bot. You have to target a bot that you haven't targeted yet. Yeah, they have tokens for each of your opponents, yep. and you would flip it face down after right. you make the attack on them. And I, I'm going to assume maybe there's some cards in there that let you get one back. I would assume so. I, I don't know. There, you, there's some special abilities and stuff. Here's the thing. There was all kinds of, like, I, I thought really cool mechanics, really cool things. It left me feeling a little flat. I don't know what Jeff thought. Uh... Pretty, pretty much the same. I wasn't like super excited. Uh, I thought the the card in front of us with the die and like when you take hits, you move the if your die ever runs out of the number because you start on six. Once you hit zero on that die, you remove it. That represents you like getting lower in life. Right. And then you put that die somewhere else to to show your boost because right. as Mickey said, you get stronger when you're dying. Right. I thought all oh, that was really cool. It was great. And I was like, man, this is gonna be awesome. Then I look at the board and it's like, I I don't think I even moved the entire game. I just sat on. Well, I don't think they and, wanted you to. I think they wanted yeah, everybody. Yeah, I know in they're trying board. to force so, so that, that, that you that that you get there. And even the board had special abilities. I don't know why. I mean, like, I, for the cost of the game, it was pretty hefty. I think it was like sixty five bucks or something yeah. like that. I'd have to play it again to see if I had a different opinion because I just felt like there was something yeah. missing, and maybe we didn't get to see enough cards. I didn't Maybe even get to draw crazy. cards. Like I, I didn't even get cards yeah. in that game. You, <laughs> so. There's only two ways you can draw cards. There's a space in the middle of the board which costs you defense to go in there to draw cards. And there's two different attacks. The attacks work like playing a game of Yahtzee. You roll the die. You have to pick what you're going to go in. after. Yeah. So just like Yahtzee, you have to be like, I'm going for a full house. You cannot change your... Well, I think you actually can change your mind in Yahtzee. I don't remember. Anyways, in this game, you can't... 
and you have to match the sets. You know, there's like two pairs, full house, one of everything, um, one and of then one the of all the different. No, or yeah, five of a kind, and then one of one different of everything. Um, so, and like, the cool thing is, like for each attack that, uh, like if you choose a full house, if you got it, there's an amount of damage that you would do to the opponent. But if you don't get it, there's actually an amount of damage you do to yourself. Right. So that was really cool because I mean right. it's like, hey, you're attacking, I, but it. Yeah, yeah. Like I, 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 really wish I knew why I didn't, like, oh my gosh, on the on the game yeah. because like the mechanics and everything, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I was just not in the mood uh, to 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 play it at that point in time. But I. Should probably it, give it another chance. I would probably try to give it another chance. Maybe we're missing something. Now, like Jeb said, this was one of those demos games. We literally only played like two, one ra two rounds, two or, rounds or something, yeah. and that was it. Maybe it get like we, we we didn't even get to really see the abilities start to kick in. Right. I think when we ended it, uh, I think all of us had the one bonus, but it the the first bonus you get is like plus one to your damage. So it's like. That's, right. I mean, that's good in the game, but it's like, it doesn't show you So, much. I'm going to leave that one up in the air. I was really excited about it. I'm kind of cooled off. I don't know if my opinion's going to um, change on it. Now, we played the one spice called... Game. Um, or is yep, that what you're... This, yeah, that's where I was going. Uh, what was it called? Caravan of Spice or something like yeah. that? Yeah. I, th I think it was something Once like Upon that. the Spice Trail. Yeah. Oh, uh, anyways. <laughs> it's a uh, game about spices. Right. This was a hot commodity. They sold out. Yeah. I don't know how many they brought with us. People loved it. Um, Jeb and I sat down. We played it. It's super simple to play. It is. It is a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, but it was. I don't know. I guess probably because we've seen the mechanic a, a million times or whatever. Um, it was just okay. I, if somebody brought it out at a game day, I would play it. It's not. It's not something I'd buy. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not something I buy. So the gist of it is, you're collecting cubes, just like in Lords of Waterdeep. How you like you finish missions in Lord of Waterdeep. That's exactly what you're doing in this game, except you're trying to acquire uh, victory point cards in a in a display. That I think there's five of them, mm -hmm. and you can buy any one as long as you can pay the spices yeah. to do it. There's also a market row that you has abilities, and gives you abilities like of uh, it, it's either um, generating spices it's either, or yep. converting spices. Right. So it's you're either getting a certain color cube or you're trading certain color cubes for other color cubes, and then it's just all about who manages their cubes better. It's pretty much like you have your hand uh, on your turn. You play a card, and then. It's the next person, and it goes yep. around like that, then you play a card. And then when either you run out of cards or strategically choose to, you can rest. And resting is giving up your turn to take, take back like all, all your, your played cards. cards. Yep. And you just go around and do that and do that until okay. the game ends. Yeah. And two, I guess two semi-interesting mechanics of the game is you have a player board. You can only hold ten cubes on it. Yeah. So that actually, like, so nobody can, that was well thought out because nobody can hoard cubes. Mm -hmm. And, and then just, you know, they can't pull a Dominion move and just go off in one turn, for the most part. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, I like the rule, it, this isn't, I, well, I wouldn't say it was unique, but it's, it's good for this game. When you buy something out of the market, it goes right to your hand. So, if you already yeah. played all your stuff, but you're able to buy a card in the market, you buy it, and then next turn you have that card to play. You don't have to... You don't have to rest first. You get it. It goes into your hand. You have it to play. I like both of those things. Um, not a bad game. It seemed to be really popular. I, th I think the appeal to it is the simplicity. I, I suspect that it's going to end up being a huge gateway type, mm -hmm. of, type of game. Um, it's it's kind of strategic, too, as long as you you know your mind works like, okay, I need this, this, and this card enables me to convert this. And... Um, I, but I, we have other games that do that, and the, you know, and and the theme was just, you know, okay, spices, whatever. I, I just, 
I mean, it's pretty, it, it wasn't it something pretty, that I was like gonna stand in line to buy. I, I don't think I'm even gonna buy it. But I, I guess I was more surprised that, that it sold out. I was like, well, I mean, we don't know how many they brought. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I would assume they have was, at least like fifty, but who knows? Well, I don't even. I hadn't heard of it until I saw. It. Like, it yeah. seemed to be a pretty, you know, big deal with people standing around, and that the area was always full. Yeah. Of people playing it. Um, I, I, I wanted to play Clank. I didn't get to play that. I wanted to play that Unearth thing. That was always full. Unearth was full. Clank only well, had one table with the board. Yeah, and no, that was we full. didn't get to play that. Uh, what other games? There's only you know? two left that we haven't mentioned. And the are you first sure? one is... Are you, sh are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure. Are you positive? There was one that I was listening to the guy, but he didn't tell me, or I didn't play it. He just kept talking about it. He walked away <laughs> and left me there. I did. And I was I like, I just that. want to kind of leave. Cool. And then he was like, and that's how you play the game. Cool. And then there's this game. Yeah. And he just kind of transitioned. And I was like, I just kind of There want was to so leave. many more things that we wanted. Like, yeah. if we could have waited for a spot, we would have probably yeah. uh, tr tried to play. Especially, like, Queen's Games had some stuff that we wanted to sit there, but you had to... You had to sign up for a session, and we just didn't have the time. I wanted to play the uh, yellow game uh, with the monsters, like Godzilla monsters, the the kaiju something oh, or other. Yeah, yeah. But no, that was fire. Wasn't that one of Gary's games? Yeah, I thought oh, it was he Fireside. Was, oh, no, it was Fireside. They were right next door to each other. Oh, okay. The Fireside game. Yeah, well, they only had one set up, one demo set up, and I was like. I'm not gonna wait. For we it, so. we we had to we had to go where we could kind of you know yeah. get get in uh, right away. Um, so well right. well let's start the, if we think of something else then yeah. then but I think whatever. We, so which which one do I get to talk about? I don't know. Uh, hey, you have to let me talk about one. Which wouldn't you do you prefer? I don't care. You. <sighs> okay, I'll I'm talk about a choice. Hero I usually I'm end doing up. hero realms. All right, so. Uh, Origins has this thing where uh, you you can spend money to get chips that are worth money that you go to the booths and you can pay for whatever uh, like, there are like special event. events. Whatever. So sign up for stuff. We had some and it was Sunday and we saw that the Hero Realms people had uh, the campaign mode, which is not out yet. They had events for the campaign mode to explain how that works and. Both of us like Star Realms. We both like Hero Realms. We, we did an episode them. of Star Realms. We haven't done Hero Realms yet. Right. We should because it's enough different that I think you guys would enjoy watching yeah. it. But we yeah. might wait till the campaign just to Could, show yeah, that. Yeah, probably. Um, but anyway, we we saw that. We had these chips, so we were like, might as well do it, right? Right. So we, we went to it, and it was us, and then I think there were two other guys who were in our group. And we each got our own characters. Uh, Hero Realms, we all... Like, the starter decks are actually customized to whatever character you are. So I was the cleric, so I had, like, some healing stuff. Mickey, you were the rogue, so you had, like, bows and arrows and stuff. Anyway. Okay, so just so you understand what Jeb's called about, not in, they're customized by these little packs. Yeah, so, right. like, Star Realms, everybody starts with ge generic right. starter deck. But in Hero Everything. Realms... Yeah. Uh, it actually does have the generic starter, but if you buy the packs, you can have the, right. the specified one. So, the campaign was going to be all of us with our, whatever hero we are, we're going up against the game, because that's how the campaign works. Yeah. Uh, there's like a bad guy card, a bad guy deck, and there's story to it, and everything, and we, we ended up playing that. Um, it was really cool. Um, the guy who was teaching us, I don't know his last name, his first name was Randy. Uh, I wonder if he's on the box. He was actually one of the, the lead art people for the game, uh, was what he said. And it was really cool. He was like an excellent teacher and a cool guy all around. Uh, I had fun with the, uh, with the game. But the campaign, the campaign, we both really enjoyed it and we're excited for it when it comes out. Uh, it's pretty much like one one hero will go, and then the bad guy goes, and then the next hero goes, the bad guy goes. So it's kind of like that, and you just keep going until you actually defeat the hero. Yeah. So on your <clears throat> like on at the beginning of your turn, the bad guy flips over a card, and oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, well, I mean, it's it is like the bad guy going, between, so to yeah. so to speak. It's just that he has a uh, he has his own deck. 
and so stuff comes out, it does really crappy things to you. Um, the main card for the bad guy sits up top, so if you're familiar with like the colors in Star Realms, Hero Realms has the same type of thing. He has a card, he has a legend up front. Every time you flip over a card, you look at the color, you look at his card, it tells you what bad thing he does. So he does a bad thing, yeah. and then the card... And then the minion goes, goes off its set. Yeah. And usually it's like a buffer. Like, for instance, the, the attacker is swinging for three, but he was red. You look at the card, red says plus three. So Guess like what? Six. Now he's swinging, he's swinging for six. Um, so there's, there's those types of mechanics. There's also a timer mechanic in the deck oh, yeah. that, that there's cards that come out. If they come out, they go under the bad guy. Mm -hmm. When he gets a certain amount of those cards, he flips to a more powerful version of himself. And the, the level one version, he was just flipping one card at yeah. the beginning of everybody's turn. When he flips over, he starts flipping two cards. Yeah. And that, holy crap, yeah, that ramp was, up. It was, was really close. It was, yeah. Um, some, some, uh, some other aspects, they did a really good job in terms of, like, what you can do as a team. Because you, you're playing, like, around, like, you, you were playing a regular board game. You're playing in clockwise order. So it makes pretend that you're adjacent to people and stuff like that. So you can't, re like... Pretend you're in a room, like you, like a melee person can't reach across. You know, yeah. say Jeb is playing over in that corner of the table over there. He can't. I can't help him. Like in melee, being across the table, I got to have some kind of range yeah. or some other special effect that can that that can reach. Same with like the villains, and you know. Uh, yeah, well, it's actually, like the, I was going to mention the villain actually is considered sitting at the table as well. So he. Yeah is in between the two heroes at yep. the end of the group, so... Yep. Uh, yeah. So, uh, like like Jeb said, it was... Uh, we're really looking forward to uh, the the campaign uh, of doing it, because we had a lot of fun, and we just barely... Won. Mickey had four life left. I, had four. I, was I got dead knocked next down. Turn. No, I, I was dead next turn. Yeah, I was the cleric, and I was almost dead. I think yeah. the wizard started to die. I think the only person who had health was the... But uh, the wizard kicked off the big move. He hit him for a lot. He hit him for a lot, and then... Uh, what, what was he? The, uh, the thief. Yeah, the thief had, the like, 40-something life, yeah. and then the bad guy got one hit in before it died, yeah. and it knocked him down to, like, 19 or something. <laughs> that was huge. And then he was able to kill him, so that was really cool. It was. It was and we got uh, a couple, couple promo cards. Yeah, we ended up getting promo cards because we, we tested it. Um, so that's basically the yep. campaign on that. So, as Jeb, like, like hinted at at the beginning... The highlight was so unexpected. Yeah. The highlight of the convention. Now, granted, we didn't get to play everything that we wanted to play. But we were walking by this table, Fun Forge uh, area, the uh, Takedo uh, Company. They do, they do that, which we did a video of. Anyways, the name of the game was Professor Evil's Citadel of Time. I did it, not remember that. It, I went I went ape when I got home looking up to see because like, I couldn't remember anything about it so uh, uh, like I always anyways so we sit down to this table there's a couple other players there and uh, he starts going over it first of all the the board is beautiful the components are really nice um, and the gist of the game is you, well, are we thieves yes okay so oh, well no not really. We're that part. I'm not sure because Professor Evil's trying to steal the stuff. The, okay, yeah. So we're the trying to stop paintings him or, whatever. or whatever, and we're breaking into this place to steal them before he right. can. So, so uh, the gist of it is, everybody takes a character. Characters have different ability. Characters have their own deck, and you are trying to get into this uh, building. What? What are the? What were those markers called that we had to try to to get? Do you remember the the paintings or the things were they, that you well, they, were they artifacts? Oh yeah, what yeah. They called? I, I keep calling them paintings, but they are like special artifact artifacts. things because okay, there was so, like Excalibur was one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, okay, so this stuff is throughout this this the citadel treasure in different services. yeah different rooms, and the cool mechanism is there's a clock in the middle mm -hmm. of the board, and the 
and the there's a a figure representing like the professor the professor evil, but he's on the board too. This just he's represents on the board him on the clock. And he has a thing on the clock. clock. And then you you have um, little tokens on there that represent the treasures, the treasures that are out in the um, in in the citadel. When you actually pull out the treasure and place it on the board, there's a number on it that tells yeah. you how how much time to put between it and Professor Evil. Because yeah. it's kind of like the amount of time it takes for him to steal it. So that's right. how the, the clock is right. populated. So there's multiple tokens on there and he's trying to get to the tokens. If he gets to the token, he takes the treasure. If you are able to, in the Citadel, each of these tokens that represent a treasure have a combination of things on them, like there's a there's a like a laser alarm, buzz and saw, there's a buzz saw, camera. so they're they're traps yep. in the house. You have to disarm them, and they there's multiple of it. So for instance, you have mentioned buzz saw. If there's a picture of the buzz saw on a certain treasure slash artifact, you have to have all the buzz saws in the house in the off position, yep. and there's not usually just one listed on a thing. There's usually multiple things, and they all have to be off. And then you have to get to the room that it's in to pick it up. Yep. And I'm sure you can deduce that he runs around and he can turn them back on. Yep. So after you do your turn, he'll activate yep. uh, and either like run around. Or and there's doors. Clock. Anytime he goes through a door, he shuts the door, and, and you have and it takes an action to open them. Yep. And I, it was, we started playing it, and we just both looked at each, like, it was almost yeah. instantly. We had, a, a, the, the, the teacher guy was good, um, but I think one of the beauties of the game is it actually, mechanics-wise, is pretty straightforward. Yeah. But there is a whole lot going on. Um, All the people have their own unique kind of, uh, I guess, feel, special, ability. specialties yeah. or whatever, because yeah. I think mine was... Uh, manipulating time, kind of. Uh, like, I could move the counters on the clock and things like that. Or... My, mine was, like, he was the trap expert. So I, most of my cards, like, sometimes allowed me to uh, put two to the off position or mm -hmm. some kind of combination of that. And my special ability, if it was triggered, I could just walk through doors without using an action. Kind of a, a, a huge ability. Yeah. Um, a couple of the standout things... In this game, for me, where like the clock, so there are three dice that operate the clock when when and you have to roll for the clock at the end of your turn. Everybody at the end of their turn rolls well, for the, the die. dice. There's one die that yeah. uh, is either symbols on the clock right. or footsteps for him. So right. it's no, so there's always the clock one. The clock one's a clock. Oh, okay. And then there's a, another one that has either the footsteps, footsteps. for him or other yeah. things that can happen. Okay. And then if he it if it gets footsteps, then there's yet another die that tells him which door to go to yeah. start his progression through, um, which is all really cool. And if he ever goes into the same room as you, you get kicked out of the mansion. You have to work your way back in. Yep. So. Yep. So if you're in the middle of where you want to be, and you get kicked out, you're gonna have to work your way all the way back in there. Uh, the other mechanic that I really like is on your turn, like you shuffle your, your individual deck, and on your turn you flip two, you have to pick an ability from those two. So you do not know what ability you're going to get, you don't have access to everything at the same time. You could get great stuff, you could get stuff that's basically useless, and you could get one good one and one bad one, but if you get double good one, one of them's going into your discard pile and you're not seeing it until you get the reshuffle, yeah. which I thought was another really cool thing about the game. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty much on your turn. You flip the two cards, pick one, resolve it, and then you've got four actions where you like move around or flip traps or open doors and okay. stuff like that. So, And then the last thing that I thought was really cool, so at the quarter hours, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that part. So, the, at the, I believe it's every quarter hour, or it might be every half an hour. I think it's every half. It okay, so every, maybe it was every half an hour. When you land on that, as a group, you get to decide whose character gets their special ability. Yep. 
And so they flip the card over to the side of their special ability, and it has a always in effect, and then a one-time use. And once you use the one-time use, it flips flip it back, back over, down. right? So you could just sit there and keep the... The one-time use going. is really good, though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then you have to wait for to get to the other end of the clock to get something else. So we were talking about everybody having their own abilities. Most of the abilities are card-driven. The special abilities that they have aren't easily accessible. Yeah, but when you use them, man, they're, yeah, they're really good. Them are, we actually... Um, I, I don't remember if he made it a dumbed-down version or not. We actually, uh, it got pretty lucky with just the way the stuff came out. He we said did, we got we got lucky, yeah. like he didn't do it he, on purpose. It, um, we did end up winning with the 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 the. Uh, we actually played. There was a two girls that we played with, and they were a lot of fun. And uh, you know, they weren't. You know, sometimes you get boring people. They 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 seem to be enjoying the yeah. game too, and so everybody was kind of into it. Like, oh, what are we gonna do? And um, and we made it, and it was, and and we just were. <laughs> we both. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I turned to the guy first. I was like, "Is this for sale?" So yeah, I was like, "I want to buy it." Yeah. And he was like, "It's not out yet." Yeah, it's Gen Con. Gen Con gets all the love. Poor Origin. Yeah, but they got True Dungeon this year. Yeah, they did. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah. so anyways, that was, uh, w Jeb would have actually had something to show you if, yeah, that's true. <laughs> if they yeah. had that game, because he would have, he would, he would have bought that, um, yeah. and I would have bought that, because, uh, the other thing that I think that was probably really, really good about it is I don't think it would be that hard to get somebody that is, doesn't want to play a hardcore game. It's yeah. It's pretty... The the abilities on the card were pretty straightforward from what we saw. It's a three action per turn game move. You can, uh, you, you know, operate, you come in contact with an object, and like be it a door, be it a treasure, be it a trap. Yeah. Um, That's pretty much it. I yeah, think. I think the the, the door is a trap, and that, and uh, and you can use, you know, your ability but usually the ability on your card costs an action to do it'll say something like um when you use an action to disarm such and such disarm the same such and such somewhere else in the mansion which is or the citadel which is which is huge because that means you could like if you guys were all over in that corner and i have that card i can like yeah go all the way over to the other side and and do it now, now that was I'm only remembering that kind of stuff because that's the guy I had like Jeb said his his cards did different things and uh, the, the the two other people that were playing both of theirs uh, one girl did, had like uh, she, her she thing had, was like teleporting yeah she had teleporting she could just like she goes move to anyway. the room like right next to the the professor it right. was really cool she hopped across the entire board and yeah. that helped out so. Um, so anyways if you remember it's Professor Evil's Citadel of Time. Fun Forge games. If uh, you know, if you get it, if you're going to Gen Con, check it out, um, or watch for it when it hits your your local game store. Uh, I know that I know that it'll be a purchase for me, much to Nina's despise. Probably an episode here uh, as well. So. <laughs> definitely an episode here, so. especially since we hyped it up. Yeah. Um, anything else? Melt. Oh, if you're in oh, Columbus. Oh, oh, and the, uh, <laughs> if you're melt in Columbus, <laughs> the the Melt Bar and Grill is a basically a, a an elaborate grilled cheese place. It's absolutely fantastic. Yes. They have so many combinations. Um, I had chorizo and potato and cheese, um, and Jeb had peanut butter and banana. Yes, Jeb is a two year old. <laughs> That's what he orders when he goes to get. I mean, there, there's like, there's like all kinds of meats and different cheeses and just any combination that you probably wouldn't normally think of, and it's fantastic. You know, you get the, they use the big thick bread and they make it just crispy. And Jeb's like, I never saw a peanut butter and banana on a menu. I should probably get that. So that's exactly what he what got. It sound like. I, it's pretty much, and you know. It was uh, delicious. <laughs> so that is highly recommended. And yes. then Saturday night, oh, which we knew, yes. which we knew about. So first of all, that you get a coupon book and there's free stuff. 
and that was all gone by the time we got there. So you know, we didn't get anything. The but we were only con was every everything yeah. sold out like within the first day or, yeah, two, or all, all the all coupon the free stuff. stuff. Anyways, but there was a there was a glass at a bar across the street yeah. which we wanted to go in anyway. So we went in there. It was like you, we were hoping the coupon was like you buy a, a you get a drink, pint, you buy you a, a drink you get the glass, glass you get yeah. a pint glass. It's specifically for origins, yep. and we had been told that they do. Uh, they have stuff on the menu geared towards they yeah. like I mean they call it, they make it special for origins they probably don't they just call it origin stuff but we, whatever so we went over there and of course we're like do you have any glasses left oh we just ran out at what'd she say midnight the night midnight. before or something <laughs> like, and we were there at midnight we could have gone yeah. like Jeb hop out and go get the things um, we didn't have our coupon book yet but anyways um, but here's the kicker they have the upstairs of this bar is old school video games and they're all free. Oh yeah. You just yep. go up and you play. Oh, and what and, else is in that room with all the video games, Mickey? Beer. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a bar upstairs. Yeah, they have a bar upstairs. So, and they have cup holders on all the machines, yes. so you get a beer and you play a game, and then you get a beer and you play a game. And Guess what you, we did? We got yeah, a beer, beer and, and played, played games. games. I don't remember what time we went home, but it was there awesome. There were so many games. Uh, we, did, we did Gauntlet. Uh, we did do Gauntlet, but it was not original Gauntlet. That yeah. kind of made me sad. It was, I guess, Gauntlet Two or something. Something I had never seen one like. I mean, that, but it was still fun to play, and uh, and and I played some Space Invaders and Asteroids and Centipede, I and then Mortal Kombat, Sonic. Uh, what was it? I can't even remember, like, Mark of the Wolf or something. I can't remember the name of that old game. Old Jeb tried game. to made, make me play Avengers, and then that's that's when we started. Oh, yeah, we played That's when we bit. started fading off. Yeah, I don't remember much. That It started getting really crowded. Yeah, it did. We got up there at a good time. We got, we, yeah. Like, there was nobody playing. You could just go whatever mm -hmm. system you wanted, but then it started to get hopping. And, uh, but... It, that place was called Barley's, so if you're in Columbus and you want to check out Barley's... Brucadia yeah, was the, uh, the gaming place. It's basically right upstairs. Yeah. Uh, Barley's is upstairs. That's what it is. I mean, <laughs> if they call it Brucadia, I don't know that it's a different business, is it? Who cares? Know. It's there. Know. It's another word and, to search for. And the food at Barley's was fantastic, Oh, too. I got the uh, I had, sauerkraut balls. Those were good. <laughs> and I had... Uh, Chipotle wings and their wings were excellent. They were really so good. So I would, um, I, I wouldn't have mind eat. We we weren't that hungry at that point because we went to get the grilled cheese late and then we had some drinks and then the appetizers were plenty because it wasn't they weren't tiny. Yeah, it, for the, like the sauerkraut balls were like this big, and the wings were pretty hefty wings too. So you didn't get cheated. Prices were pretty normal, and. Uh, and so that's pretty much our origins recap. I got stuff Jeb didn't. I got some stuff. <laughs> what his problem was? No, they didn't have any like samurai Japanese games. That's that's what it was. Whatever. <laughs> well, he would have bought one game, but oh, it Mickey, wasn't Mickey's it. like you can't find anything. Go over to Japanime Games. There's all that stuff, and I'm like, Mickey already have all that stuff. He does have most of it. Yeah. He could have bought Alice, though, but he didn't. I think it was there. They were selling it? Oh, I don't know. Was it just demoing? I think it was just demoing. Oh. Yeah. Well, anyways, but, Jeb is yeah. a dud. Yeah. He didn't buy anything. He could have bought the Orc versus Humans, or not, the human. The orcs must die, and then I could have played it. There was other things that he could have bought that he yeah. chose not to. I guess. Plus, we didn't get to play everything we wanted. We're going to go... We're... we're Next we are definitely be... at, like... Well... He, he seems to be able to get time off easier than me. But anyways, I'm making a vow to get there at least on Friday, not Friday night next time. Yeah. So, so I think I can at least handle at least one day. And it's it's within driving distance, so I can, you know, get there Thursday night, and then we'll have Friday through. That gives a whole day for True Dungeon, plus other stuff, and then the rest of the time for gaming. Um, but that's our... That's our little spiel. That was the origins. Hopefully Jeb has been popping up pictures of, like, I'm sure he can find the cover for the, what? You <laughs> usually do. I, I, throughout this whole thing, I completely forgot about popping up pictures. I know you mentioned it at the beginning of the video, but it just Yeah, so went, hopefully he's been popping it. up pictures of, like, Professor Evil and, 
and and uh, he can get a picture of uh, Orcs Must Die and all the stuff that we talked about. Hopefully, he can get you know at least since we probably botch some of the things up like we normally do. Hopefully, he can show you uh, you know so you have a visual of, yeah. of what we've been talking about. And if he didn't, then I blame him because he's the one that does this stuff, not me. I just run my mouth. I'm just gonna when when I pop up the pictures, it's gonna be over your face. So. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> we'll see. That'd be funny. So, anyways, so that was it. Uh, if you guys have any questions about Origins, if you want to know more, just oh yeah, uh, if you got any questions about up. what we played, or if you're wondering if I mean, I I don't, I actually don't think that we forgot anything. The time just went. I mean, really yeah. fast when then you sit down and play a game, you know, it's 30, 40 minutes later at least. Yeah. So by the like, time you're done with the explanation and demo and everything. At anime conventions, like, I'm used to going through the, like, the dealer's room, like, multiple times a day. But here, it's like we, it took us two days to get through the entire exhibit yeah. hall. Well, I, well mean, I mean, I think this is more of a, like, I, like, well, tell me if I'm wrong. Like, you normally when you go to an exhibit hall at... A convention like that, be it a Comic Con or whatever, yeah. it's it's mostly the the collectibles and the art yeah. and that type of thing. So you walk by, you look it's at it, it grabs your eyes, you, yeah. you like it's, it's stuff like that. This is a lot more interactive in terms of like, oh, I want to see how that's played because I don't want to spend my money on it unless I I know yeah. it's good and. Um, I, and there was just a lot of stuff that we didn't. I mean, there was one we didn't demo it, but there was one about mutated goats battling each other, oh, yeah. and there was, uh, you know, just tons of stuff that looked like they were either like some kind of uh, war game, you know, in, in space or you know stuff oh, yeah. stuff mm -hmm. that you know has got different mechanics from what's already been out there, but you just like. You, you can't hit it all. I yeah. mean, maybe you can, but I mean, we didn't have the time to do it. So there was definitely other things that we could have, uh, we could we could have tried and reported back on. And the other thing that we really want to do, which we didn't do, is actually pull out the camera and at least maybe get some, you know, hey, we're at this booth. This is the game. We're gonna try it right back now, and then maybe a little blurb at the end. But we, again, we were really, really rushed and we were trying to do that thing. We didn't even bother with the camera because it just, I uh, just, it, it wasn't, it was too much. So we didn't. <laughs> Gaming mm -hmm. overload. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. All right. Well, anyway, uh, hit us up if you have any questions and check out our other videos. Uh, yep. If you heard anything you liked in here, uh, just let us know and we'll try to get to it or try to do an episode whenever it comes out. Um, with some of the stuff, it, it already sounds like we will be, so, okay, until next time.